Okay, terrific. Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm Dan Gorodnik, Chair of the City Planning Commission and Director of the Department of City Planning. Welcome to today's public meeting of March 15, 2023. There's a lot happening at the City Planning Commission today. We've got several votes and public hearings on the docket that will create housing and job opportunities uh, and also enable uh, the expansion of certain amenities uh, for, uh, for New Yorkers. Uh, we will vote this morning on a variety of projects, including 2546 Far Rockaway Boulevard in Far Rockaway, Queens, a proposal to create 40 homes, 10 of them income restricted. The commission will also vote on 2310 Queens Plaza South, a proposed office tower that aims to create around 1,500 jobs, a publicly accessible rooftop, and a community meeting space in Long Island City. Uh, a sign that people are betting on office space in our city, including office space closer to where people live. Uh, the City Planning Commission will also vote on the paperific rezoning, a plan to expand a local supermarket and create new office space in Borough Park, Brooklyn. For our public hearings today, we will hear testimony on the renewal of an office lease for the Human Resources Administration in Borum Hill, Brooklyn at 88 Third Avenue. This space is used by HRA to help administer SNAP, Medicaid benefits, and more uh, important work that they provide to over 300 New Yorkers in need every weekday. The public is also invited to testify on the Coal Street development proposal for Richmond Valley, Staten Island, that would create 48 two-family homes and five single-family homes. This project will bring around uh, 100 total units to the Richmond Valley neighborhood, just a quarter mile from the Staten Island Railway Station. Uh, plus, the development comes with four new streets, including Cool Court, a street that is so cool that they <laughs> spelled it with a K. <laughs> Finally, in Woodside, Queens, we have not just one, but two fitness-related enlargements for public hearings before us uh, today. Western Queens it appears, is making a play to be the healthiest part of New York City. We see what you are up to, Borough President Richards. The first is to map a commercial overlay to allow a gym to occupy the second floor of an existing building at 6110 Queens Boulevard near Big Six Towers, which is a notable mitchell Lama development built in the 1960s that provides income-restricted housing to nearly 1,000 families. And the second started as a proposal for office and warehouse space, but the applicants are now opting to enlarge an existing gym at 2650 Brooklyn Queens Expressway West instead. So it is a packed agenda for us today, so let's get to it. Sarah, I'm going to turn to you. Good morning. This is the City Planning Commission public meeting held remotely through the NYC Engage portal and in person in the CPC hearing room, 120 Broadway, Lower Concourse. Today is Wednesday, March 15th, 2023. I will now call the roll. Chair Garotnik. Here. Vice Chair Knuckles. Here. Commissioner Benjamin. Present. Commissioner Bozart. Here. Commissioner Cerullo. Here. Commissioner Crowell, I believe we have on Zoom. Present, yes, on Zoom. Also, Commissioner Dewick, I believe we have on Zoom. Present. Commissioner Gold. Here. Commissioner Goodridge. Commissioner Kermani. Here. Commissioner Madden. Here. Commissioner Osorio. Here. And Commissioner Rampershad, I believe we have on Zoom. Yes, here. A quorum is present. The first item is the approval of the minutes of the public meeting of Wednesday, March 1st, 2023. Great. Thank you very much. On the minutes, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, second by Commissioner Marine. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Minutes are approved. Scheduling, calendar numbers one through four is laid over. As a result, the public meeting of March 29th is canceled. We will post a special public meeting calendar and updates on the DCP website and NYC Engage. The next part of the calendar is the report section on page five. Borough of the Bronx, calendar numbers five and six, 2560 Boston Road rezoning is laid over. Borough of Brooklyn, calendar numbers seven, eight, and nine, paperific rezoning. CD12, calendar number seven, C220470 ZMK, calendar number eight, N220471 ZRK, calendar number nine, C220472 ZSK, 
and the matter of an application for a zoning map and zoning text amendments and special permit concerning paperific rezoning. For favorable reports on calendar numbers 7, 8, and 9. Chair Grodnick. Aye. Vice Chair Knuckles. Yes. Commissioner Benjamin. Aye. Commissioner Bozart. Yes. Commissioner Cerullo. Yes. Commissioner Crowell. Yes. Commissioner Dwick. Yes. Commissioner Gold. Yes. Commissioner Kermani. Yes. Commissioner Madden. Yes. Commissioner Osorio. Yes. Commissioner Rapprashad. Yes. Favorable reports have been adopted on calendar numbers 7, 8, and 9. Brewer, Brooklyn, calendar number 10, 155 18th Street, authorization is laid over. Mm. Brewer of Queens, calendar number 11, 20, uh, 24506 South Conduit Avenue, commercial overlay. CD 13, C 230006, ZMQ, and the matter of an application for a zoning map amendment concerning 24506 South Conduit Avenue commercial overlay. For a favorable report on calendar number 11, Chair Karadnik. Aye. Vice Chair Knuckles. Yes. Commissioner Benjamin. Aye. Commissioner Bozark. Yes. Commissioner Srula. Yes. Commissioner Kawa. Yes. Commissioner Dwick. Yes. Commissioner Gold. Yes. Commissioner Kermani. Yes. Commissioner Madden. Yes. Commissioner Osorio. Yes. Commissioner Rappershot. Yes. A favorable report has been adopted on calendar number 11. Borough of Queens, calendar numbers 12, 13, and 14. Uh, 2310 Queens Plaza South. CD2, calendar number 12, C210317 ZM Cube. Calendar number uh, 13, N210318 ZRQ. Calendar number 14, C210319 ZSQ. And the matter of an application for a zoning map and zoning tax amendments and special permit concerning 2310 uh, Queens Plaza South. For favorable reports on calendar numbers 12, 13, and 14, Chair Karadnik. Aye. Vice Chair Knuckles. Yes. Commissioner Benjamin. Aye. Commissioner Bozark. Yes. Commissioner Cerullo. Yes. Commissioner Crowell. Yes. Commissioner Dwick. Yes. Commissioner Gold. Yes. Commissioner Kermani. Yes. Commissioner Murren. Yes. Commissioner Osorio. Yes. Commissioner Rampershop. Yes. Favorable reports have been adopted on calendar numbers 12, 13, and 14. Borough of Queens, calendar numbers 15 and 16. 2546 Far Rockaway Boulevard rezoning. CD 14, calendar number 15, C200232 ZMQ. Uh, calendar number 16, N220330 ZRQ, and the matter of an application for a zoning map and zoning tax amendments concerning 2546 Far Rockaway Boulevard rezoning. For favorable reports on calendar numbers 15 and 16, Chair Karabnik. Aye. Vice Chair Knuckles. Yes. Commissioner Benjamin. Aye. Commissioner Bozark. Yes. Commissioner Srulo. Yes. Commissioner Crowell. Yes. yes. Commissioner Doak. Yes. Commissioner Gold. Yes. Commissioner Kermani. Yes. Commissioner Marin. Yes. Commissioner Osorio. Yes. Commissioner Rampershad. Yes. Favorable reports have been adopted on calendar numbers 15 and 16. The next part of the calendar is the public hearing section on page eight. Great. Let's get right into it. We're going to ask those who are testifying to limit remarks to three minutes. Uh, and uh, I'm going to ask um, you, uh, uh, Sarah, to please uh, call the first item. Borough of Brooklyn, calendar number 17, 88 Third Avenue, HRA lease um, extension, and the matter of an application for a notice of intent to acquire office space, um, CD2 and 230107PXK. Great. Uh, we have a, a three minute presentation from a remote applicant team. Uh, which consists of Rushdi Patel, Nicole Pavez, Rizwana Sheikh, and George Donahue. Uh, so whenever you all are ready and elevated to the right place on the Zoom, you can go ahead and get started. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. I am Rizwana Sheikh, First Assistant Deputy Commissioner in charge of facilities for New York City Human Resources Administration. 
HRA is dedicated to fighting poverty and income inequality by providing New Yorkers in need with essential benefits, such as food and emergency rental assistance, just to name a few. Next slide, please. HRA has served the public for 35 years from 88 3rd Avenue, also known as 275 Bergen Street, which is located between Dean Street to the north and Bergen Street to the south in Brooklyn, relatively close to Atlantic Terminal. HRA occupies approximately 97,000 square feet within this existing four-story building, which is part of Community District 2. The original lease, which was authorized by Board of Estimate on September 8, 1988, was a 15 year term with two five year renewal options. And our current lease expires August 31st, 2024. We need to extend our lease for a few more years to secure our tenancy until 2440 Fulton Street, Brooklyn, New York is ready for occupancy in the second quarter of 2025. Next slide, please. The image on the left shows a heat map wherein the darker colors indicate greater intensities, or in HRA's case, greater densities of its client population. As you may recall, HRA's priority is to make service accessible where most needed, which we will be accomplishing by consolidating three HRA facilities shown by the top three photos on the right, 88 3rd Avenue, 250 Livingston Street, and 404 Pine Street at the future state-of-the-art center at 2440 Fulton Street at Broadway Junction, represented by the rendering on the bottom right-hand corner, wherein employing self-service and other computer technologies to enhance and expedite the client experience. Next slide, please. The client programs which occupy this existing location at the Borum Hill are the Borum Hill Benefit Access Center, Greenwood Hassa Center, Community Alternative Systems Agency, Public Engagement Unit, and various support staff, including training, security, IT, and custodial staff. We serve approximately 325 clients daily Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. from many Brooklyn neighborhoods as listed on the slide. The photos on the right-hand side represent client-facing spaces on the first floor, showing self-service check-in kiosk and a typical waiting area. Next slide, please. There are two entrances at this location. The photo on the left shows HRA staff and client entrance on 88 3rd Avenue. And the photo on the right depicts the client entrance onto 75 Bergen Hi. Street. Next slide, please. Uh, you, you are um, unfortunately at time, but I think um, let's just, uh, let me just pose a question to you to allow you to finish this up a little bit here, but please do it with some speed. Um, give us a sense of, uh, what you were about to say about the entrances over here, and uh, if you can just give us the final details, and then we'll pose some questions to you. Absolutely. Uh, the next slide was essentially going to say that we're located in a very transportation-rich area. Um, we're outlining on the slide all the different means of transportation, and that was essentially going to be a conclusion. Um, just want to um, end this conversation by saying uh, securing tenancy at this existing location is essential to realizing the agency's future consolidation plans uh, to improve public services. Thank you so much and happy to take additional questions. Great, thank you. So the extension here will allow you to stay in place temporarily until that move happens, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, um, and tell us just um, a little bit about what it will mean for HRA uh, once you are able to move to um, 2440 Fulton and Broadway Junction, what will that what will that enable you to uh, to do that you are not able to do today? 
Um, as our heat map had shown, what we're finding most of our clients are located um, in west of Brooklyn. Um, the intensity showed this. Um, we really want to be where the clients are present. We want to be available there. Um, we've been at our existing location for quite some time. We've done some infrastructure changes, but being at the state of the art facility, I think we'll be able to provide services in the best way available using the latest technologies at Broadway Junction. Got it. And Broadway Junction, of course, is one of the most accessible and exciting spots in the city. And certainly as part of the city's effort to uh, to bring city workers to this building uh, will help to animate the neighborhood, uh, connect even better to the future park across the street and all of the many subways and buses that come in right there uh, in that area. So more to come in Broadway Junction, but I think that's a really exciting and great spot. Uh, but we're not talking about that today. We're really talking about 88 3rd Avenue and your uh, desire to uh, uh, extend your lease. So let me see if there are other questions um, from the commissioners. Commissioner Cerullo. I just, I just, thank you so much. Just a quick question. When you, when you look at the building that now potentially you could be at for another three years waiting for the new building. <clears throat> and, and since it's really a building for the public to access, has there been any discussion about how to improve the look of the building and sort of the nature of the building itself or the exterior of the building or the sidewalk that just makes it more welcoming for the clients who are coming to access the services there? Um, absolutely. As part of facilities operations and maintaining the facility, we certainly look at making sure there's uh, appropriate signage. I believe DOT is doing some sidewalk work. So we'll continue our dialogue with the landlord to make sure the facilities is in the best shape possible to see clients. Sure. I think that that would be appreciated. I mean, the, if I recall that, you know, the windows have, you know, sort of screening guards on them. There's There's no planners or anything that sort of makes the building look like one, it's a, an amenity for the community. Um, there's no streetscape involved in it. So I, I, I think that would be helpful. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Do we have a question? Oh, Commissioner Dweck. Hi, thank you. Can, can you clarify what happens in the event that the new location isn't uh, ready in 2025? What happens with the space? So um, I'm actually gonna turn it to my colleague, George Donahue at DCAS to speak about the strategies we've used um, with the lease to sort of account for this. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, that's a good question. So what we did during our negotiation was to uh, talk very positively with the landlord where we said the building will be newly constructed. We weren't exactly sure what the date is. So this is a long-term lease in which we have the ability to terminate the lease at any time and just giving them enough notice so they can find another tenant. So it works out for them and it works out for us. So it was a, a good agreement. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Uh, other questions? Seeing none, um, thank you very much to the applicant team uh, for uh, sharing that with us. I do see one uh, other person here to testify also remotely. Uh, so I'm going to call now on Joseph Kaluski. Um, if I may speak on behalf of Joseph Pileski, he's part of the HRA team. And I think we've covered any questions or comments that we may have on this application. Got it. Okay, got it. He was not listed as part of the applicant team, so I wanted to make sure that he had a chance if he wanted to be heard, but it sounds like he has effectively been heard already through your presentation. So uh, seeing no other members of the public wishing to testify on this item, we will close the hearing on calendar number 17, 88 Third Avenue, the HRA lease extension. Madam Secretary, uh, what do you have next for us today? Borough of Staten Island, calendar number 18, Cole Street Development, CD3, C220443, MMR. Public hearing and the matter of an application for a city map amendment concerning Cole Street Development. 
Great, thank you. And on behalf of this item, we have an applicant team, which includes Phil Rampula, Andrew Gonshar, Edward Rice, Greg Fleischer, and Peter Rampula. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you here. I just wanted to clarify, Chair, that Cool Court, Mr. Cool was a, a Dutchman who was one of the original landowners, and when I was reading some of my History of Staten Island books, I thought it would be appropriate to, to name a street after him. During the course of this presentation, my goal is to answer questions raised by the commissioners at the November 28th, 22 certification hearing. In order to address those questions, I will be doing two things. One is to group the questions asked into general similar categories, and the second is to give you a historical perspective on how the site plan evolved over the past 15 years, because our office has been working on this for 15 years. Lastly, I would like to add that I have volunteered my time to the zoning working group with the Staten Island City Planning Office to amend the present South Richmond District. So the first group of questions, can we as a commission require additional conservation conditions? How many trees will be removed? How many trees will be preserved? And how many tr new trees will be planted? Does the installation of pools have any adverse effect? on the surrounding wetlands due to chemicals in the pool. So if you look at this slide, this, this um, site started out as 27.5 acre site. The city of New York came along and acquired 12.5 <coughs> acres for the wetlands and to create a blue belt in that area. The ownership had asked them to acquire the entire um, site, but they declined. What this also shows is that at that time, we had access to three separate streets. We always had access to Cole Street, but up in the left on a corner is Boscombe Avenue, and to the right is another street. So the site's been re reduced to 15, point, 15 acres. We've located the wetlands on the site plan, and the city um, asked us to do an analysis as to what we can get on the remaining 15 acres. And we had 167 dwelling units consisting of attached townhouses and semi-detached homes. Um, at that time, the site was zoned R32. And at that time, DEC policy was to allow encroachment within the wetland adjacent area up to 60 feet. Since that time, DEC has had a shift in policy and on, on sites this size, they don't want to see any encroachment within the adjacent area. So the, that in, in the dark shade is the adjacent area, which I believe is, consists of 1.3 acres. So we've gone down um, from the 15 acres to 13.8 acres. And in addition, there is only, now there is only one way to access the site, and that is Cole Street, which leads to one of the questions that were asked by the commissioners, how many dwelling units, how many houses could we get if we didn't do the mapping action? The answer is 13. Cole Street is only 30 feet wide right now. It has a corporate council opinion, which is good, and we'd have 13 one or two family homes. What we're proposing to do is widen Cole Street to 50 feet. So in the proposed site plan, we respected the adjacent area in totality. We widened existing Coal Street, and we have a series of three cul-de-sacs. And it was, they, were, they were developed in order to create a scenic overlook at the end of each cul-de-sac that looks over and into the wetlands. One of the things we had to do because of the fire department was to create that fire department access road, which connects Cool Court to the end of Bluebell Drive. And that I'll, I'll get to the access to the uh, fire department area. Due to the topography of the site, there are 13 different house models being designed. In respect to trees, we do need permission to remove 296 trees. The missing number from the last presentation is 528 trees are being preserved in their existing condition and we're planting 273 new trees. 
We actually enlarged, what, what we did is, my grandfather used to say, if you have a lemon, you make lemonade. We actually took the existing adjacent area and we put public benefit open recreational areas adjacent to the adjacent area. And you can see here um, where they are. The one on the bottom left is actually the fire department access road to your right, which serves as a double duty. It could be a walking path and a bike path for the public open from dawn to dusk. To the left, there's a step down and there is a, a wooden platform not to disturb any, any ground underneath it, which is actually a walking path. Um, above that, to the left, is the fire department gate. So the gate stays closed to vehicles at all times. A fire department horn will allow that gate to open. But if you look to the right, pedestrians can access that fire department lane at any time, either walking or riding a, bi a bicycle. To the right, up in the right corner, we developed a handicapped accessible overview that people in wheelchairs can readily access and it makes the right slope so that it's conducive to being used. And then on the bottom, what we did is we figured we would have school children and there would be a drop-off and pickup pick up area. So parents can congregate with their younger children in that open meadow lawn area. We've created a formal garden, which is round in shape, and we've created a, um, an augmented pond, which is adjacent to the wetland that also has uh, wetland benefits to it. The second group of questions included, how many houses can be built without the map change? I, I think I answered that, 13. When does SWIP and Speedy start? And we talked about the fire department access. And what is the average price per home? We are actively engaged with the DEP and the DEC to ad address the disposal of stormwater during, con during construction and after development. We have our... Uh, environmental consultant, Mr. Greg Fleischer, here to answer any pointed questions. It is important to note that we will be meeting the new MS4 regulations. In accordance with the Building Code of New York City, we're responsible to dispose of two inches of rainfall in a 24-hour period. Under MS4, it's been increased to the 100-year storm, which is nine inches of rainfall in a 24-hour period. The prices of these homes has not been determined, but the housing type did change. This project started as single family homes only. Prior to COVID, we had an estimated price of about $600,000 per home. We changed to two family homes when the real estate market jump happened in Staten Island because of the desire for people to be in open space during COVID, the cost of building material has skyrocketed. We switched to the two-family home concept because the added, added rent will help pay for the larger mortgages that the primary owner of the house will, will endure. We would have loved to have built a clustered development where we could have saved more open space, but the zoning and what I, I consider is very prohibitive. R3X large lot requires 5,700 square foot lots, which is very equivalent to an R2. And they can only be one or two family homes. There is a special permit provision within South Richmond, but it triggers a lengthy environmental review and the only thing we would get out of it would be semi-detached homes. And with the semi-detached homes, our unit count would be exactly the same as what we're proposing now. I would be glad to take or answer any questions by the commission. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure there will be questions uh, from others. Let me just ask about the streets themselves. So um, there's an action here to, to, map, to map the streets. Uh, they uh, are 
and will be for the moment still privately owned map streets with this action, correct? Correct. Tell us what you anticipate for the next steps for those streets in uh, an effort to uh, have them become city streets at some point into the future. Well, that's entirely up to DOT and DEP and, and a, um, for them to raise the money to acquire the streets at some type of cost in the, in the future. Our clients are open to that. We're waiting, but we have to move ahead with the development. So the street bed will be uh, constructed to city, city standards. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Other questions? Commissioner Kamani. Hi, thank you for your presentation. Um, just want to uh, clarify, uh, you said the pre-COVID cost of to purchase a home was 600 k Does that remain, is that the current, like? No. Can you give us a? I, I don't know. Construction material for wood frame dwellings has increased between 20 and 25 percent, and it has not gone down, and it continues to rise. And we are still six months away from breaking ground. So I don't know what that price is going to be. Mr. Srulo? Thank you, Philip. Good morning, um, sir. A, a question about sort of the, and first of all, I want to acknowledge the sort of the amenities that have been designed into the development. And I think it's great for the community, obviously the residents of, of this development, but also the residents of surrounding community to appreciate what the South Shore of Staten Island provides in terms right. of sort of natural areas. Who, who's going to maintain all of these things? You know, you talked about a wooden deck. You talked about, you know, an area for kids. What, what, what is the plan in terms, if, if you know what that is? We, we've already formed a uh, homeowners association with the attorney general's office. It will be up to them to maintain the public areas. So there'll be, uh, so as the residents purchase their homes, there will be common charges to a homeowners association yes, that correct. will then fund those things. And correct. Board. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Bezer. Is there um, a plan for any signage around these great public amenities or to make clear that it is open to the public? Yes. It, yeah. it, there'll be a sign that says open from dawn to dusk. And I believe there is a, a sign that's going to say open to the public. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Osorio. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much for the presentation, and thank you for addressing some of our questions uh, regarding um, thank you. A, a, a environmental protection. I had a couple really specific follow-ups. I was wondering if you can explain in a little more detail, so how how will the project, I mean, you, you discussed how a, you're going to be creating you're going to be increasing public access to some of the environmental resources adjacent to the property. Right. But I'm wondering if you can expand a little bit in terms of how you, how will the project protect or enhance the existing wetlands? By staying away from them. That's, that's number one. The DEC does not want us, does not want people in the wetland or the wetland adjacent area. They've told us that flat out. One of the things that the DEP wanted us to do was to take the adjacent areas and create ponds there to deal with MS4 uh, stormwater retention. Uh, we thought it was it, we thought that the idea had merit because I thought we'd be um, increasing the natural resources for the adjacent wetland. But DEC said no. We don't want to see the ponds. Um, we think the overstory of trees and the understory of ground cover best serves the wetlands. Thank you. Thank you for that. But I, I would encourage you to think about ways in which you can honor some of your responses in the WRP, which I commend you for in terms of not just complying with some of the minimum requirements, but actually enhancing some of the uh, ecological, recognized ecological complexes, for example, that the WRP has identified in ways that, as you'll see, the city policies and the waterfront revitalization program lay out opportunities for you to do so. So, I, I understand that that was part of the creation of the pond at the at the entranceway, where there wasn't a, a wetland adjacent area, but it will will function function as such, and to add extra measure of protection by increasing the adjacent area, uh, so that people or runoff doesn't go there. Oh, w 
one of the things, there was a question asked about the pools, and I, I forgot to address it. So uh, pool water is considered sanitary waste. So it does not go into the wetlands like you would take an above-ground pool and you see people emptying it into the, into the street. With in-ground pools, you're required to pump that water into the house, into a slop sink that has an air gap. Of course, it is sanitary waste. People, people bathe in it. So there's no chance of uh, that water entering the wetlands. I think you had another quick follow-up question, and thank you for that. I appreciate it. But you know, nonetheless, you know, to the extent that you can, I encourage you to take a look at some of these other strategies that you could potentially pursue in that regard. The, my question is uh, regarding um, a potential uh, inundation and taking into account projections, uh, sea level rise, et cetera. Can you expand a little bit on, on how do you entail to mitigate potential inundation moving forward? When you say inundations, you're talking about stormwater? No, I'm talking about inundation coming from the wet water body on the back. I'll 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 be I'll have our consultant answer that um, in our submission, if that's okay. Sure, this is Greg Fleischer. He'll take that question. Thank you. Hello, Greg Fleischer, Capital Environmental Consultants, Environmental Consultant for the project. Um, that's an excellent question you asked. Uh, the project sits outside. Uh, both the 100-year and 500-year uh, floodplain right now that's associated with Mill Creek um, elevations currently on the site and post-construction are going to be about 30, 30 to 15 feet above that floodplain. So uh, even with sea level rise um, that could potentially sort of kick back up through the Arthur Kill and up Mill Creek into that watershed, um, the projected um, level rise there would not be significant, and the way in which it would um, relate to the slopes of the constructed project, we would be well above uh, a floodplain, even with projected sea level rise. Thank you for that. I, I, I just, I'm looking at the map right now, and it sounds like the 2100 projections may actually have some impact. I encourage you to take a look at that, sure. see if, understand, understood that the current doesn't affect it, but the 2100 projections may. I just want to remind you that in the WRP, according to Policy Seven, you're you're required to take a look at that. Absolutely, for the for the extreme extreme flood. And I think, just to respond as a sort of to that, is that um, I think that level of projection is maybe 75 inches or so around there. So I, I think e even with a, a, an extreme projection, I'm sure you're probably looking at a graphic that maybe says something a little different. The majority of the project would really sit well out of that that floodplain, even at an extreme projection for sea level rise. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for it. Thank you, Commissioner. Other questions? Uh, do we have anybody on Zoom for, with questions? I, okay, great. Okay, uh, well, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. And also, I did want to thank you also for your assistance as we develop our uh, Staten Island uh, zoning relief for the special South Richmond District, which is extremely complicated. And we think with your assistance that we are on a really good path to making some good changes. You're welcome. So thank, thank you very you. much. Um, okay. okay. Commissioner Rampershad Chair. did have a question. Okay. Chair. Mr. Rampula, thank before you. you go anywhere, Commissioner Rampershad has a question for you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Just one real quick question. On that private 20-foot uh, access road, how is drainage being handled? Because I'm looking at our package. I didn't see any catch basins uh, shown on that particular road. I know you're saying they're being built to DOT standards, but I was just curious uh, how is well, stormwater handled the, on that particular road? So the, um, there is a difference between the fire department access road and the regular streets. The fire department access road is actually made with um, a composite, um, they call it grasscrete, where it can take the weight of a fire truck, but grass grows in the voids, so it just looks like a grass um, walkway th th throughout. So there's, and it's, it, it sits on different layers of soil, consisting most, mostly of sand, so the stormwater goes in through the soil and back into the, into the ground. So there are no catch basins. Okay. All right. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rampula. Okay, with that, uh, we will close the hearing. I see no other members of the public wishing to testify on Cole Street. 
calendar 18. Uh, let us move on to the third public hearing item, Madam Secretary. For of Queens, calendar number 19, uh, 6110 Queens Boulevard rezoning, CD2, C230052 ZMQ public hearing, and the matter of an application for a zoning map amendment concerning 6110 Queens Boulevard rezoning. Okay, great. Um, for calendar 19, we have an applicant team which consists of Dan Eagers, Maria Plattis, and Chase Villafana. Um, and when you all are ready, uh, you have 10 minutes. Welcome. Hi, uh, Chair Garodnik, uh, Commissioners, uh, Dan Eggers, Land Use Attorney at Greenberg Targ, representing Planet Fitness. As mentioned, I'm joined by Chase Villafana from Planet Fitness and Maria Plattis from the Property Management of the Big Six Towers. This is an application to change the commercial overlay at 61-10 Queens Boulevard from C12 to C24 to allow Planet Fitness to have a gym of 16,000 square feet instead of 10,000 square feet, which I hear the residents of the Big Six Towers are very excited about. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide. 61-10 Queens Boulevard is at 61st Street and Queens Boulevard, and as mentioned, is part of the Big Six Complex. Next, please. It is the two-story building shown here. Planet Fitness will lease space on the second floor on its western portion, which is the right-hand side of the photo, and it plans to open around July. Next, please. The Blocks Queens Boulevard frontage, as shown here on the zoning change map, is currently in a C12 commercial overlay. As you know, gyms used to require a special permit from the BSA, but the Health and Fitness Citywide Text Amendment enacted in December of 2021 ended this requirement. That text change made gyms up to 10,000 square feet of floor area as of right in C1 districts and gyms of any size as of right in C2 districts. So Planet Fitness can have a gym here of 10,000 square feet as of right, but it wants to lease 16,000 square feet for the gym. So we propose to change the commercial overlay from C12 to C24. No other changes to the zoning or the rezoned area are proposed. As you can see, the C2 overlay would be consistent with the C2 overlay mapped directly to the north along Queens Boulevard, which extends from 50th Street all the way to 73rd Street, as well as the C2 overlay mapped directly to the east across 61st Street, which also extends to 73rd Street. Next, please. The rezoning would provide a larger gym for the large residential population in the vicinity, particularly the Big Six Towers residents. Big Six, again, supports this application and the representative is here to speak if need be. Um, thank you and uh, we welcome any questions. Great, thank you very much. Let me ju just clarify for me, and uh, I think this is plainly obvious to everybody, but just what is happening in this existing space that we're talking about today? So the space right now is is unoccupied. Many years ago, it was used as a as a gym for for a period of time. It's been it's been vacant for for several years. So its historical use in the past was a gym, but as of now, it's it's vacant. And if this rezoning is is approved, uh, Planet Fitness would open in in this space, the sixteen thousand square foot space, in in July. Okay, got it. And the C one two would have limited the space to 10,000 square feet. This aspires to be 16,000 feet, which would be enabled through this uh, change to the commercial overlay, correct? That is correct. Okay, got it. Um, let's see if there are other questions here. Commissioner Bozor. I have a question for Planet Fitness. I was just curious if you could tell us a little bit about your pricing structure for membership. Um, I, I know you have a strong reputation for being an affordable gym, but just curious um, what your current uh, structure is and what the residents of the area would be, you know, um, having to pay to be members. Uh, Chase, please. Yes, of course. So uh, Planet Fitness, as you just mentioned, is a high quality, high value fitness experience that provides memberships starting at $10, $10 a month um, and a $49 annual fee. Thank you very much. Commissioner Osorio. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you for the presentation. I was wondering if you can uh, uh, share with us a little bit uh, your position, some of the comments that you've gotten from the community board, uh, but also the the borough president. Yeah, so so Chase, that involves um, MWBE and, and local hiring. Yeah, so yeah, that's thirty percent uh, that is being proposed. Yeah. Oh, I apologize. So uh, just to go over kind of um, our employee process. So we have normally on average 16 employees per location. We hire directly from the surrounding community uh, and market available uh, careers through both local and social media. Uh, we'll be holding a job fair within the community room at the Big Six Towers uh, approximately three to uh, two to three months prior to uh, opening the store. Uh, we intend to extend our, our theme of diversity inclusion through also our construction project as well. We'll be soliciting uh, contractors through uh, the city's MWBE process. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Osorio. Other questions? Okay, great. Uh, with that, uh, we will close the hearing. I see no other members of the public wishing to testify on calendar number 19. Uh, and so we will close the hearing on 19 and open uh, the hearing on the next item. Madam Secretary, if you will. Borough of Queens, calendar number 20, 2650 Brooklyn Queens Expressway West rezoning, CD1, C210283 ZMQ, public hearing in the matter of an application for a zoning map amendment concerning 2650 Brooklyn Queens Expressway West rezoning. More fitness. Chair, I'm recusing Thank you very matter. much. Uh, we have an applicant team, <clears throat> uh, which consists of Frank St. Jacques, Nelly Hennessy, and Sal Lucchese. Uh, and whenever you are ready, um, we have you on Zoom. We'll look forward to hearing from you. Chair, I'm recusing this matter for the record. Okay, Commissioner Rampershad is recused. Good morning, Chair Gorodnik and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Frank St. Jock I'm with Ackerman LLP. We're land use counsel for the applicant. Uh, as you noted, I'm, I'm joined by uh, the applicant, Sal Lucchese of BQE Fitness uh, and Nellie Hennessy of Caliendo Architects. Next slide, please. Uh, this application is for a zoning map amendment to change an existing M11 zoning district to an M12 zoning district in the area that's shaded red. The proposed M12 zoning district is consistent with the surrounding built context and uses and would promote economic development and job creation with the enlargement of BQE Fitness, the current iteration of a fitness center that has occupied the site for over 40 years that is outlined in red. Next slide, please. The site was zoned M11 back in 1961 and is part of a large M11 zoning district that extends from Western Queens as shown in the inset. This has historically served as an area for a range of industrial and commercial uses separate from surrounding residential communities. The built environment is predominantly conforming industrial and commercial consistent with the M11 zoning. In addition to the applicant owned 2650 BQE West, the end of the block fronting 27th Avenue is included in the rezoning area. 2660 BQE West is a 74,000 square foot lot improved with an auto repair shop. Next slide, please. The site is uh, just over 43,000 square feet. It's an irregularly shaped lot taking up about half the block and is improved with a 35 foot tall building constructed in the 60s that was originally used as a factory. In 1979, a racquetball center opened that expanded into a tennis center and eventually a gym that's changed ownership several times. It's currently BQE Fitness and is owned by the applicant. The other use in the building is the New York City Gentlemen's Club, which is not owned by the applicant and would be replaced uh, if the zoning were, were to be approved. Next slide, please. The proposed uh, rezoning would facilitate um, the an increase in uh, FAR from uh, 1.0 to 2.0 for commercial use and would facilitate the expansion of BQE Fitness both within the existing building, taking over the space uh, currently occupied by the Gentlemen's Club uh, on the first floor, some additional space on the mezzanine. And then in addition, the rezoning will allow a three-story enlargement on the current parking area with an additional 14,000 square feet of floor area, increasing the total floor area at the site to just over 56,000 square feet and a total FAR of 1.31. 
This allows for new programming and amenity space, including two new 7,000 square foot courts, uh, additional customer parking. And now Nelly, will, uh, the architect, will present the proposed de design on the next few slides. Good morning, this is Nelly from Jerry Caliendo Architects. This uh, site plan shows the and sections show the proposed three-story enlargement in pink uh, on the southern edge of the site where there's currently a, a surface parking. Next slide, please. On the first floor of shown on the left, BQE Fitness will expand into the space shaded blue where the New York City Gentlemen's Club is now in existence and on the first floor. And the enlargement will be used for the enclosed parking. New mezzanine will be added to connect to an existing mezzanine within the existing building. Next slide, please. The second and third floors of the enlargement shaded in red have two approximately 7,000 square foot courts that can also be used I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, for basketball as a, and also can be used as a flex place for the range of BQE fitness programming. And now Sal Lucchese will provide details on programming for the BQE fitness. Next slide, please. Hi, how are you? My name is Sal Lucchese and I'm speaking on behalf of the entire ownership group, which is essentially my immediate family and some extended family. Um, we're a small Bit with small business operators in based in Astoria, Queens. Uh, the original intent for this rezoning, as some of you may know, was a new industrial building, but we reassessed it during the pandemic because during the pandemic we took over what is now BQE Fitness and was a, uh, a failing facility uh, prior to. Uh, during the last two and a half years of operation, it has truly become an asset to the community in both the fitness and general for both the fitness and general group activities. Currently, we have almost 6,500 uh, members. And um, as a part of our community contribution, we offer a lot of those, a lot of our facility uh, for free or at deep discounts, uh, particularly the, the uh, basketball court um, and, and volleyball courts that we have on site. The enlargement will allow BQB Fitness to expand our existing programming and better serve the demand of our members and the community as a whole. Additionally, the expansion will add an additional 40 to 50 employees over our current 55 employees, of which over 85% are local to Queens. Um, I think that's basically it. We appreciate your time and consideration on this matter, and uh, I look forward to any questions that I can answer for you. That's great. Thank you very much. Let's see if there are questions. Commissioner Gold, Commissioner Kamani, Commissioner Hi. Osorio. Just um, one, um, by way of follow-up, um, the borough president had made some recommendations there um, and was just curious uh, as to particularly um, solar panels and um, some energy efficiency. And so was just curious um, if you guys had thoughts on addressing some of those. Yeah, yes, um, and, and sorry, we... we uh, didn't specifically note that in the presentation, but the um, we're considering on the existing pitched roof adding solar, uh, as well as uh, pervious pavers on on the flat roof portions uh, of of the enlargement. Um, BQE Fitness is is also um, starting a, a new incentive program to encourage their members to travel to the facility by bike. Um, and then we'll certainly comply with with all the um, uh, DOB and, and local law requirements with respect to sustainability and flood resiliency. Perfect, thank you. Mr. Kermani. Thank you, Chair. Thanks for the presentation. This is just a procedural technicality. I noticed that the community board provided a letter describing the um, public hearing and in the paperwork, about the community board and the public hearing, it says that there wasn't a quorum present for the public hearing. So just want to note that, that um, I assume there was a public hearing. It also says the public hearing happened at 11.30 p.m., which I assume is not the case. So the paperwork just want to, may want to match the letter from the community <laughs> board. 
Th sure. Thank you for that comment. Yeah, I, I, I can say, you know, um, the, the, the letter does reflect that there is a, a quorum present. I believe that the vote was um, at 31 to one um, uh, with uh, two not voting for cause. So um, we can we can certainly be in touch with the community board to um, so that the uh, record is, is accurate. Thank you. And the meeting did not take place at 1130 at night. Thankfully, no, it was, uh, it was, it was okay. Early. Okay, I think that is merciful for all. Okay, Commissioner Osorio. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the presentation. I, I had a quick question following up on Commissioner Gold's question. Uh, is, is, uh, what is your position regarding the Borough President's recommendation to establish a minimum of 30% goal of MBWEs uh, in, in the operations? And two, uh, the recommendation to work with additional CB1 nonprofits and community-based organizations in terms of the programming? Yes, so um, but I'll start and, and Sal, if, if you want to, to add anything here, um, the applicant is, is um, they're essentially local, local business, local developers, they're committed to local and MWBE hiring and um, committed to that uh, actually in, in the hearing with, with the borough president. Um, so that's certainly something that they've, they've strived to do um, you know, up until this point and, and we'll uh, incorporate that into this project as well. I think Sal noted uh, their hiring practices uh, with respect to the gym itself and that will extend into uh, construction of, of this enlargement. Um, and then with respect to working with uh, the community board and, and the borough president's office uh, to identify additional community partners. That's um, something that uh, BQE Fitness has been successful with uh, previously. We're, we're happy to send a list of, of all the organizations that um, uh, they provide space to, but um, the, the, the short answer is yes, they're, they're happy to do that. Um, and Sal, if you'd like to expand on that at all, um, you know, please feel free to do so. Absolutely. Frank basically covered it, but as a general practice in our real estate development business, we work with WMBE all the time. It's part of our programming um, and everything else that Frank said was accurate. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Bozorg. Hi, thanks for your presentation. Um, I think it's a great project and um, but I'll ask the same question I asked the last gym we just saw. Can you just walk us through the pricing structure so we can get a sense of the affordability of membership, given that these facilities play such a great role in contributing to the physical and mental health of our residents? But just get, wanting to get a sense of uh, the pricing structure. Sure, absolutely. In general, the, the price is about $50 a month. Um, that's for a one-year paid in full. There's discounts offered from there. Um, our pricing is a little bit different than, than, uh, our predecessor. We offer a, a, a lot of things, you know, classes, particular rooms. We have a basketball court. We have, uh, unlimited classes, by the way, spin, boxing, uh, Zumba, uh, literally a whole host. I believe it was on that slide that, that, uh, Frank had pulled up earlier. Um, well, that's in general for our size facility and our type of facility, it's, I, I equate it to my wife goes to a, another gym. I won't name the brand, but she pays just <laughs> under two hundred dollars a month for it. So, but she's happy, okay, to there, so, which makes me happy. But <laughs> thank you. No, that's great. That's great. That seems fair. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't see other questions uh, for the applicant team, so we will thank you very much for your time and attention here. Uh, and I will note, I do not see members of the public wishing to testify on calendar number 20, um, which is the 2650 BQE West rezoning, which we've just heard. So I'll close the hearing on that item. And I will ask you, Madam Secretary, if there is any other business before the commission today. Thank you. No, Chair Grodnick, there is no other business before the commission, but I do have some public information to share. For those of you who are unable to or did not wish to testify, you can submit written testimony online by selecting this hearing on the upcoming meetings page of the NYC Engage portal through DCP's website or by mailing your comments to City Planning Commission Calendar Information Office, 120 Broadway, 31st floor, New York, New York, 10271. Great. Thank you. And as uh, uh, Sarah noted at the top of the meeting, we are no longer on for the 29th, so please mark your calendars. We will stick with the 27th as scheduled. Okay. With that... 
Thanks, everybody, for your participation today, and we are adjourned. Thank you. The time is 11.02 a.m.